and it is five after four by my watch. Um, um, so, so, how do I end up with the agenda? For, somehow I got the agenda for the 16th and not the, I'm just going to print the, the agenda. Hold on. Oh, she sent that out in the reminder and the actual ones in the previous email. Uh oh. You okay? Yeah, no, no. I I was looking at the the agenda and then I thought I hit a I I thought I X myself out of Zoom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Suzanne. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, Kurt, I need the your wallet. I need his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not money. A card. <laughs> That's um, even better. There's got to be more on the card. <laughs> well, I'm making a deposit, so I'm you know you got to do it with a card because. I don't think there's anybody at the bank. No. Uh, I don't think so. By the time I get there, anyway. You're leaving Molly with me? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to leave Molly with him. Is that okay with you guys? If Molly stays. Who's Molly? <laughs> She's the puppy dog. Oh, okay. Come on, Molly. Yeah. When did you send the, the agenda? You okay, well, I sent it in my first. Do you want me to resend it to you right now? Put your... Um, Put the camera so that they can see. Can you see Molly? Oh yeah. Oh okay. He likes meetings. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, you guys know. I mean, if she's missing licking your. Oh feet. yeah. I mean, you've brought Molly to the meet, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you well, <laughs> it's yeah. Uh... So okay. there you have it. Okay. Um, Jim still trying to find the agenda. I've got it, I think. <laughs> I can screen share it if it if you don't have it. No, oh, I got it. Now. So Kurt, this is Gail. I didn't say hi to you. Hi, Gail. How are you? <laughs> I'm hanging in there. So I'm muting again. Okay. Bye. <laughs> so um we'll start the first item is the SCADA system. And I, I think if we can, um, I'll give you an update on what's happening with the RFP for that. And Russ can chime in on this as well at any time. But Mike and I have been working on um, with Paul Millette on putting together the, um, the RFP for the SCADA system. Since we're using uh, state funds, fund this, we, we wanted to make sure that we did it in accordance with the bidding requirement, the state bidding requirements. So we asked um, Paul Millett to help us with the uh, putting it together since they're the ones who did the RFP for the initial SCADA system back in 2010. So um, actually, Mike uh, sent over to all today, the final copy on that. Um, and and uh, Paul will take care of getting it out to you know, a, a group of potential vendors, including Butch Nealon, who had provided us with the original quote on the system. And we anticipate that because Butch is out here, is familiar with the system, that he may be one or one of the only ones that responds on this. So we'll see what we get. But the, the time, time frame for this is very short. Um, we're looking to get this done um, and the RFP or response back and bids on it with by uh, the middle of August. So um, just a question on the, um, is this gonna 
are the specifications for the new system going to include um, enhancements that may or may not help out with leaks? That may or may not what? Help us with leak detection. Um, I don't know that it would be the leak because unless there's um, more frequent monitoring of the tank levels, I don't know. No, that that would that would be more on the uh, meter side. Leak detection is more on the meter side. One one of the things that I've I've always been curious about is to um, get a handle on our um, on our system losses and. Oops. Anyway, in a former life, um, we were doing leak detection through through the through the SCADA system, but that was pretty complex modeling work and a lot of additional sensorization that we don't have. But I was just yeah. curious. So right now, right now they do it through actually through the meters. They can do it through the gate valves. They put sensors on them, but there are meter systems out there now that actually have the sensors built into the meters. But it's such a small system. Yeah, um, it's better off if we just do leak detection. But it's funny you should mention that because Rebecca and I, I got some stuff from her that just a few months ago, and the the unaccountable water we came up with was just above ten, which is not bad, <laughs> considering some of the old stuff that's out in the system. So um, with what we did, we came up with ten, and we're we're pretty confident that's that's what it is. So. Pretend. Questions or comments on SCADA? Yeah, was it when you say 10, was it 10 percent? What's that? Yeah, 10 percent. Yeah, so yeah, you're 10 percent lost through the system, so it's actually pretty good. That so seems, I just want to point out in terms of the cost on this, the, um, the assumption that we shared with um, housing, the housing choice people was that the installation of the SCADA system is somewhere in the mid 40s and then that there would be engineering fees associated with the RFP for that. And those came in at 8,000. So that's what, uh, that's what it's costing us to do this. And the reason that it seems so high for the engineering is it's a fairly lengthy document that they have to produce um, to meet the state requirements in terms of the um, uh, bid requirements. Um, if there's nothing more on that, then I'd say let's move on to the Boy Scout Camp well repairs. And Russ, maybe you can fill us in on what's happened there so far. Yeah, so the well pump and the uh, motor are in, and then uh, as we were trying to test it and uh, get it back up and running, the VFD had a short in it, so the VFD is gone. Um, you could, we couldn't test the VFD until we had the motor and the pump fixed. So the VFD must, the, the whole thing must have get hit by lightning. So at, right, right now we can jump the VFD if we have to use it, but Butch gave us a price to replace the VFD. And it's with a more robust, much better VFD that's in there now. Do you remember what the price was on that? Uh, yeah, I actually pulled it up. I figured you'd ask me. <laughs> I'm prepared. 33.25. And I, I did um, go online and check because of the size of that VFD, they are fairly expensive. They are. So, but that, that, it didn't seem unreasonable. No, and when it comes to those things, he's usually really good. The prices are good with Butch when it comes to VFDs. I did get another price just for, because I like to, and it was 5,200, so. Look, can I ask you, Russ? Um, I, I didn't get, I got it verbally. I didn't get it in writing. Yeah. But Sorry. I just question for you on the, 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 the cause of this. We believe it was a lightning strike. Um, and I think this is the second one that we've had on one of the well sites. Yep. Uh, and the um, question came up from Mike Travato. Is it, uh, what's the potential for getting insurance on something like that? Do you know? Uh, no, but I've never seen it before. It's, you know, and we, we do have lightning arresters in some of the stations and some of the stuff, but they more are protecting like the computers and stuff. And right. if you, you take a direct hit, you, you, there's nothing you can do. I actually have a system in Norfolk. It's been hit seven times since, maybe it's me. It's been hit seven times since I've been there. I mean, I've been there for 21 years, but 
it's been hit seven times and hit hard. So, well, you think about it, it's essentially a lightning rod that's sticking down into the ground. Yeah. But again, you know, they, it comes and goes here and there, but, uh, you know, you, you lost the VFD in the motor, so it probably took a hit right on the wellhead. Yeah. I mean, I've had them where they've taken hits in the wellhead and it blows controls right off the wall. So, you got away with it, I guess, in one yeah. sense. All right. You know, Russ, that the, the um, uh, lightning protection that we do have is adequate for whatever we can do? Yeah, it is, Kurt. Like, we, we go through that stuff a lot. And, uh, you know, you take a hit like that, there's no lightning arrestor in the world that's going to save you. And it, uh, it usually blows them up on the sa at the same time. But uh, there are, is stuff in the c control panels and stuff. There's nothing really to put on the wellhead itself. It's more the controls and the starters. Right. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Okay. There's nothing else on that. Uh, we can move on to the MassWorks application. So um, the MassWorks application uh, process is open now. The um, submission dates, the window for the submission dates, uh, I believe, are August 18th through the 28th. Um, that we can actually submit our application. Um, Mike and I have met a few times on this. We involved, uh, the last week we involved Paul Millette in the discussion on this. And uh, be because there are sections of it that are fairly technical, some of which has already, well, the starting, what we did already, where we had um, environmental partners do was the initial uh, estimates on the replacement of, or on the installation of the water main from Coles Neck uh, down along Route 6 and into town on Rock Briar Lane. So um, the, uh, so, but Paul had made a very important point uh, on this that in terms of that MassWorks application, the, the closer we are to being shovel ready on this project, it's uh, the better, or it'll be more competitive uh, our application will be more competitive. So one of the things that needs to be done in conjunction with this is a survey of uh, the, the land where the water main would be placed. And that would be regardless of whether it's the uh, coming down Route 6 and then one block or along the Coles Neck Road. Um, so that's, uh, that, that, we want to try to get that start, at least started. We know that it won't be uh, uh, finished but before the application goes in, but that we can at least say that it's underway and that would increase the, hopefully increase the percent of the completion of the project, I'll we'll say uh, 5% up uh, to maybe 10 or 15%. Um, and there's a couple of other things that we could get started as well. The cost of that, and that's primarily for the survey work, uh, is, is likely going to be somewhere between um, uh, fifty and eighty thousand. And I talked with Kurt the other day about the uh, availability of um, the uh, con consultation fees that were approved uh, at town meeting last year. One hundred and twenty-five thousand that was approved for wastewater and water. And Kurt, Kurt, correct me on this, but it was your under, you're thinking that we had probably only spent uh, a little less than half of that amount for wastewater to date. So there should be somewhere in uh, at least 40 to 50,000 there for the water system to use for, for this. Um, if, uh, uh, because we won't have enough with the um, housing choice monies there. Um, this is not for any of the costs associated with the assistance with the application to MassWorks. We can't use the housing choice monies for that. So that would have to come out of our budget. And um, we believe that there's still funds available from the 2020 um, budget and uh, we've asked to have those funds uh, encumbered so that we can use them uh, for this project. Um, and 
we would like to go in front of the select board uh, at the meeting at the, I think it's July 28th, if I'm not mistaken, um, 27th or 28th, and to at least tell them where we're at with this and what we're planning to do. So um, I would, uh, if you, uh, any thoughts on this? Because um, it will be important that we be, that we're prepared for that for that meeting with with the select board. I see Kurt's on the phone, so I guess. Uh, yeah, they do have a meeting on the twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. So, go ahead, Katherine. Oh, so I see the next item is to request to meet that we want to meet with them on the 28th? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we'll need to get that uh, in through, uh, um, who, who, do, who would be scheduling that then? Um, I can send in a request to Courtney and she can put okay. her on the agenda. I'll do that okay. first. I'll do that after the meeting or yeah. first thing tomorrow morning when she's back in the office or okay. in the office. Yeah. So, um, Sorry about that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Any thoughts, Kurt, on this? No, I think we're I think we're in good shape. Um, I think we've got adequate funding there, and I think um, you know the basic outline program outline that you put together. Uh, at the end of the day, we're I think between grants and other things, we're gonna, the town's going to be in great shape. So I think this is a money that's extremely well spent, and we certainly have the budget there. Yeah, what, what one of the points that Paul one other point that Paul made was. In addition to the mass works funds, and this is, um, and with respect to that, this is the exact kind of project that they're looking to support for, um, the, you know, for housing for the development of affordable housing, um, in terms of the infrastructure related to that, and there's a possibility that, uh, that Paul recalls what happened back in 2010. With the last major project we had with the installation of the wells at the Boy Scout camp and for the water tower was that there were stimulus, stimulus funds, federal stimulus funds that were released at that point that we were successful in getting and to the point where we ended up with um, uh, USDA funding of 60% grant and 40% um, loan at that point. Uh, which is so, uh, so so much more generous than what the, they normally would provide, which is like 25% grant and 75% loan. So we're hoping that there would be, you know, a similar um, opposition this year with uh, stimulus funds. The other thing, Jim, I think we've got in this particular instance is um, th because this water ex this water extension serves, um, you know, potentially public housing. Um, a public health care facility, and um, quite a few, quite a number of businesses along the route. So, from an economic development standpoint, from mass work standpoint, this should be a very, very attractive application. And and for stimulus, because you know it's um, it's really this is this is about as good as it gets from you know at least in Wellfleet for economic development. <laughs> it's not just a residential service extension. You know what I mean? Right. The other thing I noticed that in the um, warrant, there is mention of um, funding being appropriated for uh, an, an evaluation of a, a fire suppression system at school. And if that were to go through, the, the, the expectation would be that they would be drawing water through the municipal water system for, for that system. Obviously, it's not going to be a significant draw, but it would be at least that it's something that would impact on water pressure and to want to, um, to refill that system in the event that there were any kind of incident. Uh, speaking of that warrant article and the fact that we want to go in front of the select board about this project and what, why and which, which option that we're recommending in terms of the, um, um, the main 
the work on the water main. The Article 10, which Rebecca just put up, is the article that is being proposed. And um, one observation on that is that we probably should to, uh, amend this to say more about why the, the choice for the, um, the Route 6 and Briar Lane option versus the Poles Neck. Um, and, and some of the points that Kurt has made, I think, would, would be important in, in sharing that with folks in town as to why we're recommending that and that calls that. That way, I can tell you that tomorrow night the um, Finance Committee is meeting, and this was on their agenda because they, they, you, you presented it to them, Jim, way back in February about it being the Briar Lane Project. And then when the warrant came ahead of them, it, nowhere in this article does it say Briar Lane. So they were a little confused as to what it was going to be. Um, so if, you, if we can somehow reword this article in itself, just to recommend the Briar Lane aspect over the other one, I think it would, they'd be more willing to vote on it because they, they liked what you presented to them back in February. Yeah. Well, I think in light of that, I pro what I probably will do is uh, join that meeting tomorrow evening mm -hmm. and ask to at least uh, expand on that and let them know that that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be adding language in there to explain that it would be the Briar Lane option and why. Okay. Be. And I'll email Fred and just let him know that that's that you'll be there for that. So if they have any questions, they can ask you right then and there. Yeah. What time is that meeting? 7 p.m. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, Rebecca. This, um, the warrant article is, isn't very, isn't very strong on advocacy. No, and it's, it's kind of vague, and I understand yeah. why they did it originally, just to kind of get it out there. But if the, if the finance committee is going to end up voting on it, they kind of need to know exactly what they're voting on, because this is so vague. And I think you have a better chance of them voting uh, eight to nothing in favor of if it's more descriptive on what your plan is. Well, and the public's going to feel the same way. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. And oh. in fact, um, I, I just I noticed as I was getting uh, joining this meeting that I got a, um, an email from Dan uh, about the warrant article. So I haven't even had a chance to read that yet. But I, at, but I did ask Mike, I said, I think we need to set up a meeting with him. To, you know, to explain why that's important. Because Dan was the one who originally kind of helped structure this article um, when, when it got prepared. You know, for example, um, I mean, I don't want to belabor it, but um, uh, bidding and bid documents related to infrastructure from the Grismo Way well field to improve the hydraulic flow from, uh, of water from town secondary water source. And I, I think what we really want to say is something really strong there, which is um, to um, to add redu required redundancy in the, in the water system. Um, you know, so it's it's a required thing. Right. It is. Right. Isn't just something that we're thinking about doing because it's a wonderful thing to do, but you know, is essential for the for the uh, development. And, so and Paul Bullett confirmed that again last week that DEP will, will want that redundancy with the expansion of with the expansion of the system. So one thing that I noticed is that that word secondary, I'm with you, Kurt, should say redundant water system. And if you right. look in the CCR, I put some language in there about how this would really help not only with redundancy, but the D, you know what I mean? Look at that language I put in the CCR. It has some pretty good uh, words. Okay. All right, but well, I doubt that we'll be able to get that amended and over to the finance committee before tomorrow evening. Um, that's why I'm suggesting that I. Dan you know, will be on the meeting tomorrow night too, so we will. can work out the wording for that as well. So maybe he can change it before it goes to print because it hasn't gone to print yet. Well, I can make those recommendations to him. Thank you, Kurt, for your suggestions on that. When's the um, deadline for um, printing the warrant or 
I mean, well, it, right now it's kind of up in the air because from what I understand, the select board might be changing the town meeting date from October to September. So if that's the case, it has to be um, fairly soon. I would imagine July 31st or the first or second week in August. I'm not totally sure, but I know that that's what they're discussing. Because the FinCom had planned on meeting at the end of September for the October meeting and now it kind of got pushed. So now they're meeting tomorrow night to vote on the articles. Say that again. What's the push to move from October to September? I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I just work here. <laughs> when I spoke with Justina about this last week, she isn't even aware that there was a movement to change it from October to September. I Fred had said it to me, and he said he spoke to um, the mediator. Is that his name? What's his name? Dan Silverman, the moderator. Yeah. yeah, that's the word, moderator. Yeah. So, and I guess he was pushing to have it moved to September, but I don't know that for certain. So don't quote me. Oh, but it has to go through the select board as well. And I think they're discussing it tonight. Okay. I'll let you know, I'll be there. Okay. Um, anything else on that? All right, so we had actually, we had talked about Jim just briefly, um, the idea of including, um, and it may be, you know, obviously if it gets, if the date gets moved up, it's even more difficult, but uh, having an amount in that article that would um, cover, for example, meters and other things that are part of system upgrades. Right. Um, What's your thought on that? I'm a little concerned about changing the amount now after it's been um, already uh, presented to both the select board and the finance committee. Um, I mean, well, we kind of didn't know. I mean, this, this is the situation that we're in. You yeah. know, we get things thrown at us that we don't know about, and then we got to go fund them somehow. And we, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't feel like we're, I think the project's so important that, um, again, putting, putting the necessary uh, amounts of money in that warrant article for the water system to, um, you know, meet its meet its um, obligations is important, and I don't see how we can separate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we need that system upgrade. We need meters. Um, I think there's there were one or two other items that they're not big dollar items either. So you know, in other words, changing the number isn't going to be a, isn't going to. I don't think it's going to um, break the bank, so to speak. It's not going to really change the directional impact of like a three million dollar article. Or, or um. Russ, can you remind us what we had estimated the meter replacement would, would cost? Give me one second, I'll pull it up. Give me one second. Keep going, I'll, look, I'll pull it up. Give me one second. And what we did say was that we, we you know, in terms of the meter replacement, that we thought that we could limp along for a while on that if we had to. Not that we should, but if we, if we needed to. Um, I'm just concerned about taking it over 4 million is going to, um, that's, a, that's another, just a, another threshold, so to speak, that we would have to discuss with both the select board and finance. Yeah, what, what's the current? Um... I, got one, I got 140. That sounds right. For all the meters? Yeah, it's 400 meters. Yes, it won't take it over. It won't take it over. Um, it won't push us over four. I did ask for 40, uh, 400 meters. 
Yeah. You still uncomfortable, Jim? Well, you've sat in front of the, the um, finance committee before on these kinds of issues. What's what you're thinking is how that they're going to react to this? I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference because um, these are critical infrastructure upgrades, and they're uh, you know they're necessary. Um, it's going to cost the town less money if we do it this way than stretching it out over time. Um, you know, as Russ has said before, it's a lot easier to get all the meters ordered and just to and to bang bang it out. Um, and again, you know, as part of the opportunity for stimulus funds, um, you know, in a year or two, those if there's if there's any stimulus funds around, we're, you know, we wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be able to get them in two or three years. If we have a shovel shovel ready activities, we're much more likely to get um, some of this paid for under under stimulus funds or, or grant funds. Well, and if I can put my two cents in here, it's not like you're asking for something that you don't need. Mueller has pretty much come to you and said, hey, guess what? We're not going to support these anymore. Sorry. Good luck. So, I mean, it, it's not like you're asking for a new water truck. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's something that you guys, you need. And the old meters are eventually going to start to fail. And then, like Kurt just said, it's going to cost the town more in the long run to fix all of these meters because then you're going to have to find someone who will fix it because Mueller has pretty much washed their hands of it. So it's just something to think about. I mean, I love the meters only because I know my job will be a little easier, but it's not like you're asking for something that you don't need. It's more of a need than a want at this point is my opinion. And I have no problem stressing that to the finance committee. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, I could raise that with them if I go into that, if I'm allowed to speak tomorrow evening in the meeting. I just emailed Fred and said that you would be there to answer any questions if needed. And I think he'll appreciate that. And Dan will be there as well. So I think, I think it'll be good that you're there. And if they say to you, you know, why is this? I can back you up because I'm the water person. So you know, it's, it's a big deal because there are a lot of issues that are going to start to arise. I mean, some of the meters are already broken. So, you know, they got shattered by lightning or shattered by just mishandling by owners. So. But Russ, again, 140, correct? Yeah, that's correct, Jim, 140. Okay. Seems to Kurt, make sense to me to do this. Kurt, what do you think about, you know, Floating it with the um, the finance committee tomorrow evening. I think it, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, you know, we. Uh, I mean, it's just we can't avoid it. We're just it's going to cost less if we do it now, and we've got opportunity to get stimulus funds. I mean, nobody likes to, you know, no. Obviously, we're not, you know, we're not trying to spend money that the town doesn't have and can't afford. Um, you know, it's, you know, we're trying to be responsible and I don't see any other way around it. Uh, and I do think the timing, even though, you know, even though town budgets are stressed, I think the timing is better now than, than um, you know, trying to kick the can down a year or two from now. And that, so we get the new meters, but Russ, I just have a question. Does that include like you're, we're allowing, we're going to be allowed to use Turo's things with it. I remember you saying that you could, we didn't need to get it all. We just need to get the meters. East Ham. Oh, it's East Ham. East Ham, that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. the reading system is part of our contract, so it wouldn't be a problem at all. Awesome. So the, oh, the 140 then is for the meters alone, or does that include the installation? No, meters, installation, the MTUs, the whole thing. Okay. And that's a good point too. We're getting and we're piggybacking on East Ham's meter reading, so we're not having to buy separate equipment. Okay. Just stay, just stay with Penachuk for a few more years, and we'll be all be good. It'll just all fall into place. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Penachuk is actually helping in the long run because they're keeping track of. Um, they have a better system to keep track of, because you the water. Um, department, we charge to have meters taken out and meters installed. 
And there was no way when I got to the office almost two years ago, there was no way to know who was doing what and when. So Penichuk now has kind of like a spreadsheet and they, you, your, your revenue is better with Penichuk only because they are on top of anything that gets fixed because now I have, I submit to them kind of like a form, like a work form and they get it. Sometimes I get some, I get some, I get a copy every single day and some of them are blank, but it lets me know what address is being charged for what, how, what money is coming into where. And it's just, it's a more regular type of income that we're getting that we weren't before because I was kind of all over the place with who does what and when and where. So it definitely helps to have them working at this point for us because they are bringing in more revenue than they were before they came on board. So, um, Kurt, if I, um, I'm, I'm going to try to amend the language in the description for the board article um, you know, in the next couple of hours and I'll send it over to you. Just have to take a look at it. And if you have any suggestions as to um, you know, improving it, you know, please. And then I will use that um, and sh share that with Dan all, in all likelihood tomorrow um, when I speak with him in advance of that meeting tomorrow evening. So we're talking about not 3.83, but we're not talking about uh, 3.9, uh, <laughs> something like that. All right. It's still under four, Jim. It's still under four, okay. <laughs> Three nine 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 five. Yeah. <laughs> and 99 cents. Yeah. <laughs> um, if there's nothing else on that, uh, I'd like to just move on to the minutes then. Any comments? I think they're great, if I do say so myself. Do I hear a motion? I was just pulling them up for a second. Kurt's, Kurt's going to read first. Okay. I'd feel really guilty if I voted for them without at least looking at them. Yeah. Totally understand. <laughs> They're not as detailed as sometimes because now that your meetings are recorded and they're immediately put on the town website, I don't need to be as detailed because anyone can go back and listen to them. Well, so I can't vote for them anyway. I wasn't there. Oh, that's right. Are you not? Okay. Well, then. So we open the forum to approve the minutes. Okay. We can. Um, so we'll have to hold on that. Sure. And you can if you want. Um, I just can't vote for them. So two yeah. people can vote for them. You can get them. You can get them posted and all that. But unless you think any of the other board members would want to look at them or have comments or questions or changes. Well, I think that I mean it's not going to be that difficult. We can wait. So if, if when we get Tom back in or, or, or Neil, we can do that. Yeah. So let's table these for the next meeting. All right. Uh, so in terms of the next meeting, obviously, I'll like to, as I said, have a, a representation at the select, the select board meeting on the 28th. Um, And I don't know that there's any reason for us to, to meet then as well, you know, a separate meeting, um, unless somebody feels differently about that. And then we could go out into August. In the meantime, we'll just be working on the Mass Works grant application. That's good to me. Okay. So you're gonna try to be with the select board on the 28th? Yes. Okay, is that gonna be all of you or just one of you asking to get on the agenda? Well, I'll, I mean, obviously I'd like to, to get on the agenda, but I, okay. I mean, if there's anybody who would like to also participate in that, I'd welcome 
the support. Okay. And so are you looking at like August 4th for your next meeting? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put it in my phone so that okay. we know. Perfect. And what time? Same time. Works for me. Yeah, a question on the um, the warrant articles. Uh, I don't recall now when I looked at that. Was that a PDF or was that a, a word a word document? I have it in both. Which would you like? I would like the word document. So you have the word document. Okay. What day is the um, the uh, select board meeting again? The, the 20, 28th, it's a Tuesday. It's at seven via Zoom. <laughs> so that's when we would be telling them about the change in the amount that we're requesting uh, in the article. Um, I think we won't be able to get to say anything to them tonight about that. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Yeah, I just want to let you guys know that um, over the past couple of weeks, we inspected every fire hydrant in the town. So they've all been inspected. I did find one broken one. I'm going to go look at it myself tomorrow. Tomorrow? Friday. We found one broken fire hydrant. Uh -huh. So wow. they're, not, they're having trouble operating it. So I told them to bag it and we'll take, I'll take a look at it this week. But everyone else looks good. Okay. 135 Old Truro Road was hooked up to water yesterday. <laughs> Is that? Um, Larry one? Kaplan. Larry Kaplan, okay. <laughs> good, good, good guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he's got water. He has water. Um, Jim, I have one, one question. I know we had some discussion a couple of months ago, and I don't know if anybody ever, if this, this ever got circled back, but uh, when the Historical Society was going through the discussions about having um, um, a water connection for their fire suppression system, right? did they, are they still going forward with a water connection or did they find a Halon alternative? No, they did both. They, they did both, yeah. They put in the six inch water main for this fire suppression system. And they also did a connection for domestic water. Oh, oh, okay, huh, wow. Yeah. So Halon was, co was not cost effective. I don't know because uh, you know we asked about that, but like they had had some discussions with the um, with their engineer on this before, and that they ruled that out. Okay, interesting. That's no. Now we just got to get them to get a meter and hook up to the water supply and take water, get rid of their well. That's all we need to do now. What do they need, Russ? The water. That right, that water. That's right. Water. You love that dirty water. <laughs> I didn't know it's come from Cape Cod. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing more, uh, I would like to suggest that we adjourn the meeting. I move to adjourn. Okay. Second it. All right. Katri, anything? Right. She Hi, I, I think we need a date for our next meeting. We have August, August 4th. August 4th. Oh, I missed that somehow. Yeah. I'll send a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Gail, anything? No. Nope. So have a good uh, couple weeks. All right. Thank you, Gail. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right, everybody. Bye, thanks. guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Rebecca. No problem. Have a good few weeks. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye -bye.